Hey everybody, Dave from Identity Crisis Design. Now I wanted to uh, give you guys a little, uh, I guess it would be like a slideshow tour of the uh, Frazetta Museum. I visited a couple, well it was a weekend in September, and uh, uh, well, I was going to start with the drive in now. <clears throat> I love this, this property is really nice. And those little wood uh, bridges are, there's a couple of those sitting around. Uh, but as you go in and you get a chance to see the structure, it actually resembles a you know castle with gates and that's a pretty wicked little neat little building. Okay, so <clears throat> so we go in. There's the uh, fat guy pretending to be me. But the uh, yeah the gates and the stucco and the shingles it's all really very nice, um, and this is basically what it looks like on the inside. Now, <clears throat> for those of you who are not familiar with Frank Frazetta, and I'm sure it's few, um, there's probably going to be less people on the custom paint side than there will be on the comic book fantasy art side. Um, he's been such a big influence. He's been a big influence and a forerunner. Um, he literally changed the industry and changed the way that um, a comic book art and fantasy art is is seen and uh, raised the level of respect uh, simply by keeping his work, keeping his originals. Um, before Frank came on the scene, and you can see here what we're looking at is a is a small, not necessarily a, a recreation, but a, a gathering of material that, um, along with his, you know, studio and um, the art and the easel, um, the palette with the oils, and um, you can see here a book of a uh, hundred hands, which I own a copy of that, and and I love feeling the feeling of uh, being on the right track uh, as an artist. You know, if uh, your guy. Uh, who is your favorite artist, your main influence, is uh, reading the same book that you are, then good for you. Um, but uh, back in the day, comic book art was not looked at as a, a le I want to say legitimate art form, but I'm going to. You did your work, you did your pencils, your inks, you sent the page in and you never saw it again. And um, who knows where it went. But you can see here, even on line notebook paper, you know, and this is a great thing too. I mean, he's like practicing his initial there or whatever, but these, these uh, scrawling on, on, on notebook paper is the kind of stuff that you would do as a kid, okay? Which is there's Frank as a kid. Um, by the time, um, you know, I was much older than that and he was much older than that. Um, I would get in trouble um, because I would not be paying attention in math class or whatever class did not did not excite me as much as um, as art class. As there's neat conceptual sketches of the uh, of, of the building, what it might be, or a house. Uh, it could be that this was a, a house design, and then uh, it got brought over to see what the uh, what to to help make the museum what it is. Okay, but I love these old scratchings, these or these old sketches rather, and um, you know, making his own um, making his own comic book. Um, Frank was a very athletic guy, um, and and was a, was actually a prospect for Major League Baseball. Um, but uh, and a, clearly having a having a thing for cats and the feline structure, um, I think that. Um, the greatest thing about going to this museum and talking with uh, Frank Jr. and uh, who our tour guide was, Lori, his wife, um, that you, she really, really loved this guy. He was a great family, uh, great family man, great um, to his, uh, you know, absolutely just loved his grandkids and, um, you know, and of course, all because so he loved his family. I mean, it's like. I don't want to say like it's nothing big, but in this day and age, you could learn something about that. Um, how you do it, you know, uh, uh, how you how you go about showing affection for your family and you know, working hard. But also, um, his his wife um, Elsie 
or Ellie, I think I got that wrong, um, uh, recognizing something in his artwork that other people did, or at least seeing a value in 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 the original work, um, which you know when you look back on it. It seems to be self-explanatory. I mean, something that's being printed over and over and over again, the like a dollar, you know, the individual, uh, the the individual piece of paper, uh, the reproduction is not going to be worth as much if there's millions of them out there. But uh, get your hands on the original, get your hands on the plates that print that money, and it's a different story. Um, so he kept his originals, where a lot of times in early comic book and early comic strip art was uh, printed and tossed. It had outlived its usefulness. There was no collector's market for it. Frank Frazetta is the man that's changed all that. Um, and 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 why not? Um, I mean, look at this. His command of the human anatomy and being able to be so expressive with it is uh, it's, it's second to none, even, even back then. Um, when you watch the uh, Painting with Fire... DVD documentary, which is on sale here at the museum, and I encourage as many people as can. Po I'm going to go back again. Um, we're going to get a better hotel room, <laughs> that's for sure. Um, we're going to get a um, maybe, you know, find a place that's you know closer so that we don't spend as much time uh, driving and finding our way around East Stroudsburg. Which, you know, I mean, I live around. I've, I've been around. Pittsburgh for since since the 90s and uh, twists and turns are something that I'm familiar with. We've got nothing on East Stroudsburg. That place has got some strange turns. Uh, traffic is odd. Uh, but Lori goes through and gives you a perspective <coughs> excuse me, perspective on Frank that you're not going to get out of books. I mean the paragraph is one thing but uh, hearing who he was as a person from a family member who not just who doesn't just appreciate his artwork the way that we all do and should, but um, um, yeah, as a person, it's really very enlightening. Um, the way that they have these inner walls set up, um, the man behind the curtain aspect to the tour is something that I um, I. I knew I would be hearing something about that, but I didn't think that it would be so in depth. Um, I was even, you know, talking with my wife yesterday about that. Uh, you know, we don't get to go on a whole lot of trips together because, um, you know, I'm always, you know, trying to keep the, you know, the house paid for and to the extent that I can secure a future for everybody. So when she got me this trip for a 50th uh, birthday present. Um, it actually, you know, I read the card and, you know, it brought me to tears. The funny thing is, um, she had ordered some things from this museum as a gift for me and she'd done it before, but I don't think she realized that the uh, PayPal account that she was using had my email address on it. So I saw that she had ordered some things from the museum and I wasn't going to say anything. I didn't want to, you know, ruin the surprise. But, uh, when she told me that she's, we're going to get a hotel, we're going to take some days off. We're going to the first, go into the Frazetta Museum, effectually, um, my Graceland. This is my Graceland, sir. Um, I, I, you know, brought me to tears. What can I say? And um, so I got the uh, I got my hap cry action going, and then when we finally made it out here and went on the tour, it's um, and in listening to Lori talk about who Frank is and, as a as a person. And, um, you know, it's, it's one of those things where, like, for me, I have to watch a movie more than once. There's some life drawing. Okay, this takes some pretty good explanation. Um, and I'm not going to go into, into depth because I think that um, that's Lori's job and that's Frank's job and that's uh, Frank Jr. And that's why you want to go out there and talk to them. But this uh, larger-than-life version of The Death Dealer... Um, I didn't even know this. Um, it sits. It's a. <coughs> excuse me. Dry throat. There's an army unit in Fort Hood that uses this as their mascot, and I, you can see these guys in the in the picture to the uh, upper right, uh, picking it up and and moving it around. Apparently, this either comes apart and goes back together, or they pick up and move this thing and take it with them when they go overseas when they set up their stuff. 
they take that bad boy with them. And uh, it's like a, the, you know, the biggest badass good luck charm I've ever seen, uh, ever. Um, of course, this is where I first noticed and, and first saw um, Frank Frizzetta's work, me personally. Um, yeah, you know, my my life growing up at home was not the, I wouldn't call it typical, I mean, it was the 80s, and um, uh, my, the, the satanic panic had a stranglehold around, you know, my mother, so, uh, you know, stuff like this would not be allowed in the house. Now, I would go through the record store, and I would just stare at this album cover, I would stare at all of them, and not just Frank Frazetta, you know, let's, uh, I, I would, I, I liked, you know, um, Drew Struzan's work on movie posters, and, uh, Roger Dean uh, doing Yes, and uh, Stanley Mouse uh, uh, doing the Journey album covers, and I would just look at this artwork, and it was absolutely beautiful, and I, I just stared at it forever, trying to pick up on as much detail as I possibly could. Um, and when I finally did decide to not listen to Mom and grabbed a copy of uh, that first Molly Hatchet album, I thought that I was going to be listening to the devil's band and uh when i heard country fried rock <laughs> come over uh i i was I, I just i didn't get it um now i i love the band um i've owned all these or or own all them well they're all digital files now anyways but um you know i have all this music i've listened to this music and it's and it, it's it's amazing stuff but i just remember that first it was like a like some something happened in my head and i'm like wait a minute this isn't what this is supposed to sound like. <laughs> this is supposed to sound like uh, this is supposed to sound like a dark, slow, painful death. Um, but uh, this is where I first saw his work, and then started looking for it all over the place. And then, you know, if you do look long and hard, you'll find um, people like Honda. Now, not commissioning him to do this work, but definitely uh, paying for the rights to use it. Another death dealer right there. And then what the death dealer's motorcycle might look like. I would love, and, and God knows if I'm ever going to get a chance to do this because who's got the time anymore. Um, I would love to see um, what that would look like if it was finished. And there's, you know, there's no one to, there's, there's no Frank Frazetta to finish it now, but it would be fun to take that and, uh, and expand on it. And we can see... Frank there with some Hollywood greats, including uh, oh, there's some cartoons. Uh, and this is this is another great thing about uh, more of the great thing about the museum that uh, when Lori takes you around and and in you know when I walked in, um, I knew that I was going to be seeing artwork that I wanted to see in real life because I'd seen it printed in a book. When Lori takes you around, um, she points out all of the stuff that is special to her as a um well as a family member um but it's the things that are special to her in connection with knowing frank in person and whimsical cartoons like this are are some of the who knows how long it took him to to crank out these they I mean they're just as finished as any good piece of comic book art could be um you know usually when i see it uh comic book art it started you started off in a non-photo blue go over it with a pencil and then ink it but he looks like he's going straight you know straight to the uh, triple dog dare and going right to the ink and doing it perfect with no effort uh some great pen and ink washes here and that's uh, you know and this is a lot of stuff that um you know a, a lot of people that know frank's work they know the oils they don't know um, some of the other mediums that he would work with, watercolors, pen and ink, you know, every, all of them, they just seem like, um, and it, they seem effortless. It's intimidating. But of course, here, going right from effortless to um, being forced to learn to draw with your left hand and uh, training the other side of your body to do what your brain already knows how to do. Um, it's part of Frank's story, and you'd, you'd, you'd see it in the DVD, which I, I highly, highly recommend. In fact, um, and I'll put something in the, um, in, in the show notes, in the, show, in, the, in the description, whatever. This is one of my, 
I don't YouTube all the time, so eventually the lexicon will get to me. But um, I'll pick up on it. But I'll leave a link in the notes to go visit the museum website. Um, they do have a Facebook presence that seems to be about the limit of their social media. Um, I, 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 if that's on purpose, if that's by design or whatever, I would think I think it would be great if they had something more because um, there's a lot of people out there that do great comic book work that um, would really appreciate. And some people, I hate to say it, some people don't know that this is out there. Um, but one of the stories is, true story, Frank in later in life had suffered a series of strokes and uh, left his right side incapacitated to the point where he couldn't do artwork and was forced to learn how to uh, draw with his left hand. Now, to anybody who's got a um, more than a cursory knowledge of his of his work and, and life, they would already know that, but it is in the Painting with Fire DVD. I've had a copy of that and watched it a few times. Um, they sell at the museum a Blu-ray, and I'll probably pick this up anyways, um, but they, there's a Blu-ray of the Fire and Ice movie, 1982, a rotoscoped animated movie, um, and if you haven't seen that, it is a moving version of a Frazetta painting. Yeah, also had this poster. Also had this poster in my room. And uh, Mom hated that. Uh, Dave didn't care. It's great work of color. And this is this is one of the only, if, if it, it could be the only, there's one figure down on the left-hand uh, corner. Almost all of this is dedicated to the uh, to the background, to the scenery. You don't see that a whole lot with Frazetta stuff. Um, his 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 command of the human figure is is such that you would expect to see that it's like anybody who uh, likes to draw uh, people that they're in love with the form, they're in love with the uh, the way the machine looks and works in every position. Uh, but down here, just little elf. That's it. Uh, now, yes, and, and there's something else that Lori would tell you about. Um, Frank's wife loved uh, African and, and, and Japanese decor and, and work. There's a great story behind this painting. I'm not going to tell you. You're going to have to go and find out. <clears throat> now, right here is... Um, there's a, there's a, lot of, a lot of merch here, clearly. And coffee mugs. Uh, mouse pads and a lot of um, you know ad specialty stuff, but then there's these uh, portfolios, high quality prints of different. Um, like he did a treatment for Lord of the Rings, which is really nice. Um, the one that um, I plan on picking up the next time I go out there is the uh, Fire and Ice. For those of you who haven't seen the film, uh, there is a exposition. Uh, portion in the front that basically sets the story up and it does this through a series of drawings and uh, some narration and uh, this portfolio there is those drawings and that and, uh, there isn't uh th there isn't a frame of this movie that isn't pause worthy but uh, up in the front uh, for anybody who's you know trying to understand what frank was thinking when he was drawing it's one of those ones where you just stop and you stare at it and you try to uh, suck as much talent that uh, off of the page just so that you can absorb it yourself. Um, some great framed prints. Um, I picked up, uh, there's there's a series of three uh, tins. Uh, I don't want to call them tins, but they're, um, they're a high quality print on metal. One of the Death Dealer, one of the Silver Rider there, that uh, blue, uh, blue background with the Viking, and one of the uh, Berserker over here on the right. Or left, rather. Yeah, there's three of those. I grab out all three of them. It's like giant trading cards. Um, this, there's an interesting story behind that, too, because most people have seen the previous version of this picture. In fact, that was in a discussion with, uh, with a guy online. He's like, I don't remember that picture, but I remember it differently. And here's a perfect example, too. This here, Death Dealer, down near the bottom, and I'm not going to get into the story again, this is something that uh, you would want to hear from Lori because it's a, it's really great. It has everything to do with uh, what Frank was thinking and feeling at the time um, versus um, uh, here in this older version at the bottom versus this newer version at the top. 
Um, and he, he did this more than a few times, um, not to everything, but you know, something I didn't like about it, so I fixed it or changed it or, you know, I can't remember who said it. It could be Da Vinci. I think it was one of the old masters that said um, of paintings are never finished. They're only uh, abandoned or merely abandoned or can only be abandoned or, or whatever. And, and I have uh, thought that myself. Um, right here, I don't know if you can see this over to the right, uh, this axe hanging on the wall. Uh, don't know if I'll ever own one of those things um, because I can't. It, it worth every penny, um, but I wouldn't want to buy it and then not try to use it. <laughs> not on someone, but just you know, give it a toss. There's uh, Mrs. Frazetta, and there's some uh, pictures of the uh, the family. Now this painting at the top, I've seen that in print in the, in a couple of his books. That one in the middle as well. Here's a better version if you can see how he was working with washes and pen and ink and and uh, just e even e there's 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 so much movement and action even in the hands, um, which is also something I really enjoyed about uh, Bernie Wrightson's work. A friend of mine from school when junior high he was a huge huge Bernie Wrightson fan, and uh, it was like this weird Coke Pepsi competition between us, you know, Frazetta no Wrightson Frazetta Wrightson. Um, just uh, amazing. Yeah, there's a great story between these two. Um, and this is this is one of the only times where what you see is um the first version, uh, not really uh not not really digging things a ton, and then instead of painting over it, uh, painting another one. And uh, I, I'm telling you right now, um. The amount of detail that you see in any one of his oil paintings, um, where you would look through the book or look at the album cover and try to see past the printing moiré and get as much detail out of it, it is worth it. It is worth it to go here, put your fingers right there on the wall, lean in as close as you can. Um, the dude gets as tight as you can with a brush. <clears throat> now, this wall here. I want to make sure that I point this out because uh, every um, artist that's ever done a life drawing class, and I've done some, uh, I've, I've done my share, um, and it's something that I don't think that you should you know, stop doing. I, I don't get the opportunity to as much now. Um, but the reason why I pull this up and, and, and point it out is because um, to, to me, it's, A lot of times when I look at someone's work, um, whether it's you know one of my, my I used to I, like love Alan Davis and Paul Neary's work, um, you know John Byrne, uh, Neil Adams, you know all the greats, um, and Frank Frazetta, Bernie Wrightson. Um, there's this automatic thing where you look at the finished product and you don't see all the steps you know they uh you don't get to poke your head behind um the curtain or 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 you know go to a fine restaurant and go back into the kitchen and see how the food is made and and this is how it's made now not to say that um you know frank didn't have natural talent because everybody knows he does you, you there's there's no denying it um but right here is 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 proof that um, while wow, there's a lot of work involved, you know, you you do have all this, you know, studying. Nobody is nobody is born with it. I've I've heard people say that you're um, you're born with a God-given gift to to draw or to do art or something like that. And and I don't remember ever having uh, whatever extent of talent that I've got being given to me in a box with a bow on top and all I had to do was unwrap it and start using it. Um, what I got was a God-given bug up my butt to learn how to draw the human figure as, as closely as, as possible. And every single one, I heard Ethan Van Skyver say this uh, during one of his live streams, um, every drawing that he does is hard, is 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 work um, because you're always trying to you know 
work on a position that you're not used to and not go back to the well and make your stuff look boring. You know, try to do things new and different and better and um, find those those magic moments like the, you know, that that you know first kiss or whatever where you want to get that feeling back and you want to be able to impress yourself with a drawing it all uh, any of the paintings that i've ever done myself most of the time I'll, I'll i'll say this for sure anytime there wasn't any money involved and it was always pure i was always more happy with the work at the end a couple of times where i would you know look at a painting and steal myself and say wow i can't believe I did that. You know, that's it doesn't happen all the time. In fact, it happens pretty rarely. Um, but this is how you get there. And, and 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 this wall, a whole wall dedicated to working at it. I mean, that's that's what I love about what Frank and Lori have done with this museum. It's magic, yes. But it's also realistic um it's it's not um they don't have they don't put frank on a pedestal because you don't have to he's he's just up there you know they put him they 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 bring him down to earth so that you can meet him through his drawings and the various exhibits um you you've got to go this is just some pictures of the of, of the grounds um, I don't know if they do any kind of events or anything like that, um, but uh, yeah, I wouldn't mind having a picnic out here. <laughs> you know, make sure it's not on a day where it's it's raining. But there's the structure right there. Um, it was a great time. It was beautiful. I love. I I can't I can't wait to go back. Um, but I honestly I think if I was gonna go, I would want to go on a Sunday or Monday. And if they're closed, I I, you know. You're closed Monday, great. Let's go out uh, because you know, there's somebody pretending to be a fatter version of me uh, hanging out by the door there. And I put this picture especially right there because <laughs> that's how I know I got to the end of the pictures. But um, yeah, I, I can't say I cannot say enough about what a great trip this was. I thank you to my wife for finally dragging me out here and getting me to go on the road to do anything is, is really hard um, because you know, we're not exactly the best pair of people when we're in close proximity to each other in a little metal box that's moving at 75 tops um, but yeah the you, you've got to go you know this, this, the, this man has done so much for comic and fantasy art and in the way that people perceive it especially um you know corp uh, publishing houses and other corporations that want to buy our work and um you know and uh it this is the frank frazetta is the guy that says what happens he's the guy that he's the guy that knocks you know um he's he's gonna take your money and he's gonna tell you how it is and he's gonna have a smile on his face, and you're gonna love him at the end of the day. Uh, I can't, I can't say enough about this place. It was amazing. I can't wait to go back. And uh, thanks to Lori and Frank for having us out. And thank you, honey, for getting this for me. Okay, guys, I'm gonna close this thing out here. I will. Um, I do not want this landing on me at the end. I'll put some links in the description and to uh, to the website and uh, to the uh, Facebook group that uh, Lori is active in, and uh, hopefully everybody out there who owes them you if you're an artist if you're a comic book artist fantasy artist um, you know about this guy if you don't you owe it to yourself to learn um, it's his 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 life's work and what he's done for the industry is um, is amazing and. Uh, well, what else can I say? I don't want to gush too much, but um, that's how it is. Uh, anyways, uh, if you guys want to see more of my artwork, I'll have that link in the description too. And um, uh, you guys have a great day, and I'll talk to you soon.